Okay, so try to look at the first question. It will direct you to what you need to see in the passage anyway. So uh, look at the first question. It says samples of the colorless solution of unknown pH. Okay, so um, uh, does anybody have some answer for uh, question 36? Um, okay, so let's take a look at it. We, we have uh, a colorless solution of unknown pH replaced in each of three uh, test tubes. When thymophthalene is added to the first test tube, it is colorless. So we look at the table one, and we look where thymophthalene is there, and we have a pKa value of 10. So we have to keep in mind pKa. What is pKa? So pKa um, is... Anytime you see the small letter P in front of a K, it means negative log. So you see pH, pH means negative log hydrogen ion concentration. POH is negative log OH minus concentration. PKA means negative log KA. Okay, so, and, uh, and you know, they also give you that information, but of course knowing it ahead helps a little bit because then, you know, you also have a sense of what Ka is and um, Ka is the acid dissociation constant. And so a Ka is an equilibrium constant, so it gives you um, the concentration of the different components at equilibrium. So, therefore, the pKa gives us the pH at the equilibrium. Right? Because if it's the pKa is negative log Ka, Ka is the equilibrium constant, so then the pH is giving you, uh, the pKa is giving you the pH at the equilibrium. So we know that the equilibrium from the, for thymophthalene pKa value is 10. We know that the acid form, more acidic, would be a lower pH, as we saw in a previous unit today. Uh, more acidic is lower pH. More basic would be the opposite, higher pH. So below 10, it's colorless. Above 10, the base form, it's blue. So now um, we know that this unknown solution that we have is colorless in thymophthalene. That means it has to have a pH below 10. When we put it in alpha nap, it, it has a blue color. So we look at alpha nap in the uh, table. Alpha nap at a pH below 8 is yellow, above 8 is blue. So that means that we have an unknown solution with a pH between 8 and 10. That's what information we've been able to, to garner. So it's between 8 and 10 and we know that uh, if we add it to this uh, third test tube with thymol blue, we look at thymol blue, and we see that at 8.8, .8, which is between 8 and 10, uh, we have a yellow below 8.8 .8 and blue above 8.8. .8. So we know that, uh, for example, if it was a pH of 9, we have a combination of yellow and blue. And so what, does, what color does yellow and blue make? This is something you probably learned in grade 3 or grade, or grade 4, and you never thought that this would help you get into medical school. And yes, yeah, so uh, yellow and blue together uh, make green. And even if you didn't you know, uh, remember that, um, it is in the notes in the passage. So in the notes in the passage, uh, it says that... Um, the color observed will be a mixture of the colors of the two forms. A mixture of red and yellow will appear orange. A mixture of blue and yellow will appear green. So, um, so yes, the answer is green. Answer choice D. Okay, so uh, question 37. <laughs> so question 37. The range of pH in the indicators will be completely changed from acid to base. Would be expected of what pH range? So, um, does someone have an que answer for question 37? Okay, and why? Why is it answer choice C?
Okay, so the question is asking, the range of pH values over which the indicators will completely change from the color of their acid form to the color of their base form. So what we want to know uh, so is, is explained, by the way, um, Acer does this relatively frequently, relatively frequently. If you have a second question um, and you have no idea what the answer is uh, in a passage, go back to the answer to the first question. Because normally the first question in that passage would be a question that is relatively easy, normally, and a question that um, will help point you to what the second question will be. And the second question is usually more difficult. Okay, so just try to keep that in mind. So the first question was about the mixture of the colors over a certain pH range. The second question, again, is asking about the range of pH uh, that the, the mixture will change from one to the other. And the answer comes from the same paragraph that tells you that uh, blue and yellow will appear green. So in that same paragraph, you have uh, this information. The information pointing to um, the range over which the ratio of uh, acid and base change changes. And the range goes from 10 to 0.1. So what factor is the difference between 10 and 0.1? Well, yes, you, you, you jump to the answer, which is um, two, but the factor difference is 100 because you're going from 0.1 to 10. So 10 is 100 times 0.1. And we already talked about the logarithm of 100 is 2. So already, just by doing general chemistry, we've used that the logarithm of 10 is 1 in a previous question, and now we're using that the logarithm of 100 is 2 in this question. And this same booklet also has the use of logarithms um, for physics as well. So understanding logarithms and knowing the rules, you know, this underlines it again. So yes, the, que the answer for question 37 is 2, which is C, uh, because it's 100 times change, which is um, a change of a logarithm of 2. And we use logarithm because um, pH is negative log hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so uh, question 38. Equal, equal numbers of moles of um, bromo, thymol, blue, and neutral red are added to a solution that has a pH of 7.1. So we're starting with the uh, pH of 7.1. The concentration of the protonated and deprotonated forms of each of the two indicators can be presented as follows. Okay. We're going to use bromothymol blue. Bromothymol blue, its pK value is 6.8. Okay, so bromothymol blue It has its uh, pKa, so that's the pH at its equilibrium point, is 6.8. Bromothymol blue's um, protonated form is M, is the letter M. So I will put the protonated form below 6.8 M, right? And its deprotonated form which would be the basic form, would be above um, 6.8, right? Just is consistent with what I was saying before. Below the equilibrium value, you have the acid form, which is protonated. It has the extra proton. That's an acid. That's one of the definitions of being an acid, is a proton acceptor. Above the equilibrium point, uh, the pKa value, you have the base form, a deprotonated form. It's deprotonated, um, uh, like for example, OH minus. So now let's. That is uh, bromothymol blue. For neutral red, its um, its pK value is seven point four. So I'm gonna put a little knob up here, 
and I'm going to write 7.4 for neutral red. And so below 7.4 will be its protonated form, and um, that would be the letter R. And this is as given to us. And above its um, uh, is, is the letter S. Because now, now watch. This is exactly 0 0.3 units from our unknown solution. 6 point, its equilibrium point. This is also 0.3. Now, however, notice that if we are using this solution, 7.1, which form dominates for bromothymol blue? The form which is M or the form that is N? Which one dominates at 7.1? M or N? Which form dominates for neutral red, R or S? Yes. So can you see that R would equal N? And N and R will be greater than S and M. And S and M are also equal to each other. So N is equal to R, and N and R are greater than S, which is equal to M. Answer choice D. If the pHs did not, if the pKa values did not give an uh, equal distance from the pH, then this would, none of this would be true. It's only because the difference is exactly 0.3. N is dominant because at 7.1, it is already above 6.8. Look, if the, if the pH we were given was 6.8, then you would get equal amounts of M and N. If the pH we were given was 3, we would have M dominating. But the pH we were given is above the pKa, so N dominates. That's for bromothymol blue. But 7.1 is below the pKa of 7.4, so R dominates for neutral red. And because the distance, the numbers are equal, therefore those components are equivalent to each other. 